please join me in standing up. Stand up real quick. I understand that we are forming one new team. And so as we form one new team, I'd like to start off a little bit differently. Would you please find someone in the room that, uh, let's say, has been avoiding you? Uh, no, I'll say it differently. I'll say it differently. Uh, you actually don't know them very well. Go find one person in the room, create a group of two, and I'll give you the next instruction. Someone not at your table. Go please find that person. In our work in the last 25 years, I'm talking about 65,000 plus hours in the field of shadowing leaders, working with teams, we've, we've boiled it down to what we call DSD. Teams in a lot of areas are distracted. They're unable to focus on what's really important. They're becoming hopelessly stressed and they're disconnected. This is a huge one. It's funny, isn't it? We can connect and communicate more effectively than ever in the history of man. And they're showing that the signs of the, the as they measure connections, human connections, we are less connected than ever. And it's showing up in terms of stress levels, depression, and so forth. What else are we disconnected from? At Veris Global, we fundamentally believe that actually the answer is right in front of us. It's a human, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a dynamic, it's a wisdom that actually is a, an agent, a bonding agent that is consistent on every continent we work on and every human being I've ever interacted with. I'd like to position it this way. How many of you um, have spent some time with a child? Most of us have a, a child, some, most, that's all of us. Um, I've got four, so I know a thing or two about this. Um, kids, kids function like this, don't they? In other words, anything is possible. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, uh, my oldest, when she was seven years old, it was presidential election, we were reading the Denver Post, I was. She was eating her Honey Nut Cheerios at the breakfast table. You know, she's got the milk running down her chin, the whole thing, right? And I'm talking about the presidential election, and she looks at me with this beaming face in between her bites, and she says, Dad, someday I'm going to be president. Woo! I go into journal, yeah, on this date, you said you're going to be president. No joke, a couple days later, uh, there's some noise in the back of the house. She goes to the back window, the trash collector's going through the alley. Uh, and she's pointing, she's just sitting there with wonder, and she looks at me with this beaming face, same one as two days ago, and says, Dad, someday I'm going to be a trash collector. <laughs> I don't think I put that one in the journal, I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, you go, girl. Remember, remember functioning like that? I do. I remember functioning like this. And then my sixth grade year in elementary school, I remember um, because our family is farmers, we didn't have the means, others did, so we were in that government cheese program. And I remember actually being in a group where I was actually perceived differently than my peers because of my, where I came from and who I was about. Wow, valuable lesson in terms of what I portray to others. Do you, do you know anybody in your circle of friends, your family, or a coworker who are, who are showing up for work like this. And then, and then some organizations have the gall to say, I need you to have drive. I need you to have discipline. I need you to be all in. Pursue excellence, give of yourself. How do we do that? The common wisdom that binds all of us is that as human beings, we want to function like this. You're looking at a human being who is on a lifetime journey of what they have called self-actualization. And organizations that enable people to do this, to develop the human capability, singular, to be the best humans we can be, always outperform their competition. What's it like for you when you get to function like this? What do most organizations trying to do to energize their teammates, so their, 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 their workforce? External motivators will pay you more. You can wear jeans today. We'll buy you pizza. I mean, I'm, I'm generalizing here a little bit. Yeah, it's true though, isn't it? And we're gonna energize, 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 but we're smart, we're human beings. Inside, we're actually saying, quit insulting us. Jim Collins talks about in Good to Great, he says, human beings in our natural state, we wanna be great. We don't have any issues with energy, but we get ourselves into the ultimate system. What's the ultimate system that will overrun, override every system that you guys create? It's your culture. Culture eats strategy and other systems for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Teams cannot deliver success unless they're functioning from the same reality. Well, that makes sense, that makes sense. But let's just, let's just explore this a little bit. I'm gonna make a statement, and I'd like for you to identify uh, your, your response. Of, you'll, you'll likely have one of three responses you'll either really, really get excited and love what I said, uh, or you'll, you'll get really angry 
and frustrated and not like what I said. And the third one is you won't care. So here it comes. The New England Patriots are the current NFL world champions. The NFL Patriots are the current NFL champions. Uh, please raise your hand if you love hearing that. Please raise your hand. There's always a few. All right, okay. Look how high they hold their hand, too. What's up with that? Uh, please raise your hand if that makes you a little bit upset, a little angry, you don't like hearing that. Show of hands. Okay, about equal, actually. Okay, there we go. How many people don't care? Oh, okay. Awesome. <laughs> it was actually perfect. Uh, proportion of people in each group because this happens in meetings in organizations every day. Topic of the meeting comes up, an event happens to a business, and there's a percentage of the people who get passionate, which is where our focus goes. There's a percentage of the people who get passionate in a different direction, and there's a larger group that actually doesn't care because it's not even it's not completely aligned with their deliverables, and they don't even know why they were invited to the meeting. <laughs> This, this, is, this is occurring over and over and over again. So how do we create a common language, a, a common tool that we can actually begin a meeting and, and be in the same reality? That tool is something that we call the energy map. The energy map is basically a map that allows us to identify where our focus is. And the second step is where we want our focus to be. I'll give you a little example here. You'll see a middle circle here, an event, it's a smaller circle. My daughter, when she was 17 years old, had been dating this guy. First time she dated anybody. I was really pumped for it. They dated for about, I don't know, 11, 12 months. Uh, and then the day came when they broke up. As her father, I'm thinking, this is good. Emotionally mature, you know, she's gonna, she's gonna learn some valuable lessons. How did she respond? Anybody have a 17 year old daughter in your life? I'm telling you what, dad thought it was this significant of an event and she thought it was this size. And of course, where our focus goes, the energy flows. Energy follows focus and energy determines our behavior. They're all interlinked. And so understanding this map becomes really important because we have choices, don't we? Then the question becomes, how do we mobilize ourselves to the part of the energy map we want to go to? This is the third and final step. Um, there have been some people who have told us that this is the most valuable tool in our entire suite of 21 tools. As we do executive coaching, as we do uh, our programs, as everything else, that this particular tool has been, well, even at home, has allowed them to get home like this instead of getting home like this. I'd like for you on your flip chart, sorry I don't have a flip chart in the front, I'd like for you to actually draw the energy map. It's a small circle like this, it's a large circle around it, and then you've got a third of it that's on the back side. This is what it looks like. Long arrow to indicate more time, shorter arrow here, just like this. Once you have it written up, I'd like for you to put a hot topic, something that when it's brought up on this team, you can feel people get emotional about. Lots of times it could be a compensation, it could be anything, any project. Go ahead and put it in the middle of the energy map. Go for it. Um, in most organizations, I don't know what your experience is, mine as a shadow, is most people assume those things. They're just assuming it, which means people are functioning from different realities. New England Patriots won the championship, who cares? Uh, and so these are questions that really are critical so we're functioning from the same reality. Nicely done. So personal opinion, um, I have great faith in humanity. We've figured difficult things out before. We're in a, we're in a tough stretch. But I, I will share this, um, I get up every single day knowing that if I can touch the lives and affect thinking of 50 people in one day, we can grow the consciousness um, and, and we, we, will, we will find a better way. We, I, I think we all know it's not sustainable. We'll find a better way. Yeah, yeah we will. We will.